guys, ever remember the balls video? Well, if you don't, too bad. If you do, good for you, because today we're going to con be continuing my stupid stories of fifth grade, because I'm bored out of my mind. I'm bored out of my So, um, that video I made about roasting the fat teachers in school, how I called them a blobfish, yeah, there's a fat teacher in this video, and it's a little blobfish, I mean, like, See for yourself, man. So this all started when, as a fifth grader, Antics has to do a job around, like, the school, along with all the other fifth graders. My my job is totally irrelevant to the story, but his job was being a buddy to the kindergartners. So that means every Tuesday at recess, he was gone. So I needed to find a new way to spend some time at recess. I'm not just going to sit there and read. Who do you think I am? I'm, well, I am a nerd, but I don't give two fuck. Anyway, eventually, I managed to find my way to Marco Polo, and here's how the conversation kind of went. Hey, yo, bro. What? Do you want to throw balls at the blobfish? Hey, yo. No, I'm being serious. Like, school balls. Like, wouldn't that be fun? Well, I mean, hell yeah. So me and Marco Polo managed to get a hold of a ball... And then we tried to find some cover. Lucky for us, our first day was pretty simple. We got cover. Uh, hold up. Uh, how did Marco Polo get all the way over there? That's not part of the story, okay? Anyway, after we found some cover, guess who it is? The blobfish. <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. Like, I I'm sorry. I I'm really sorry. So when the coast was clear and her fat ass was looking the other way, uh, Marco Polo decided to, uh, snipe her. For all I know, she was looking around to see who did it, and me and Marco Polo were trying to run and make her forget about it until we can go back outside to touch some grass. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically what it is. Blobfish stories get really more interesting later in the fifth grade. I actually had one the day recording this video, but it's insane. Next week, that Tuesday antics was gone, we did the exact same thing. Get a ball, locate the blobfish, and uh, chuck the ball at her. Except when I throw it, I'm more of a short-range person. So what I do is I get the ball, I start running up to her. Oh yeah, but she's facing the other way, by the way. I don't want her looking at me. Who the f*** would do that? Anyway, I have my ball over here. I'm like, mew, and then I throw the ball, run behind some cover. Somehow, she doesn't see me. I do a backflip, and I shove my hand into a blender. Like, bro, can you imagine? If you couldn't imagine, that's great, because I did not shove my hand into a blender, and I did not do a backflip. I, I just wanted to say that, okay? Like, come on, man. A, a guy has to do what he... A few weeks later, we have an entirely new guy join the whole entire story. Not in the Balls Kid video. Row, row, row your fucking... So me and Marco Polo are just walking down the, uh, I don't know, like, blacktop. It was a freezing day today. Marcos was wearing his hat. I was wearing my hood, probably. And I have the ball just to make sure if I ever see the blobfish, I can chuck it at her. And I don't know what Mark, uh, whoever this row, row, row your boat was doing, but he managed to steal Marcos's hat and run away. And because Marco Polo was, you know, like, he, he spent so much time with me, I'm not letting this slide. So you know what I did? Uh, just let the clip play. <laughs> Yep, that's right. I chucked the ball at another fifth grader. Row, row, your, row your boat. I gave the hat back to Marcos, and I kind of ran. But this guy knew it was me. So I kept the ball. I tried to throw it at him again. This time I missed. So you know what I did? I kicked him in the balls, and I left. Yeah, that was literally more perfect than it could ever have been.
thinking of throwing stuff at people. Now it's lunchtime. Broski, it's lunchtime. Now, for some reason, my seating arrangement is totally different. So, like, uh... Anyway, the seating arrangement, I sit here, and an entirely new kid sits over here. And he's, like, really goofy in my class. There's also a lunchbox over here, which we will, which is very important for later. Uh, yeah. So, eventually, this dude, which we'll call Goofy Boy, Goofy Boy was trash talking me so much. I didn't get, I don't care twice about me picking up the lunchbox and shucking it in his face. And like bro and flying, it was insane. I loved that single moment. It was beautiful. And everybody was watching from other tables. They were like, oh my gosh, he's a savage. Oh my gosh, he's going to commit suicide. We're back to recess, except recess was today. So it's a usual Tuesday. I mean, we had a lockdown drill total. It's a usual Tuesday, Antix is out babysitting some five-year-olds, and me and Marco Polo are out here doing some, uh, blobfish shit. Anyway, our idea was, what happens instead of just throwing the ball at the blobfish, we instead surround her with a hula hoop. Now, obviously, she was too fat to fit into the hula hoop. This video is not made to scale. So we decided to get multiple of them. Multiple of them is around this big, and we're not going to break them and, like, make a giant hula hoop. So instead, we just surrounded her with all the hula hoops in this video, or this, yeah, scenario. So, yeah, eventually, the blobfish comes to a stop. Best part is, it's near some cover. So, but we don't need cover, because right now I don't give two fucks about her noticing me. So I decided to get the hula hoop, and like, now she's stuck in the hula hoop. El bozo, my guy. Except for the fact that she walked right out. So I put her in the hula hoop again, and eventually she's like, why are you doing this to me? Just cuz. Now, just cuz was a bit... Uh, an understatement, because eventually Marco's backed up and sniped her. Twice. One time he sniped him, it got a dead in the ass, the back one if you are wondering, and apparently the next time it hit her in the back. So the next time we were running as far as we can away from the blobfish, uh, like just, just tuck the ball away, I don't give two fucks about the ball. And because she saw who I was, I don't want her noticing me, so eventually we find two, um, like, no-go restricted areas, because apparently we could escape school that way. We, of course, didn't. So, this person was, like, Miss, uh, the frickin' Blobfish was trying to look around seeing who did it, and she had the ball as well, so she was looking around for around 10 minutes, probably looking for me because, you know, that's a good motive, and eventually she just walked away, so we got... Back to the scenario, and that was basically it. Besides talking about... If the Blobfish was in a horror game, it would be Five Nights at Blobfish. That's basically all I talked about for the story, so, yeah. Um, also, I just got back from karate. Just 